After about a week of sailing engineless from our original port on the Riviera Maya, Mexico, we arrived in Progreso. But our challenges with the boat were just beginning. The harbor is a cozy little place filled to the brim with fishing vessels mixed with a surprising amount of booze cruise traffic. And now we would have to make our way to the shipyard. wind was directly on the nose to get to the place where we were heading. We began tacking up the fairly narrow and shallow channel, a good amount of current emptying out of the vast coastal wetland that dominates this region. We weren't sure if a support vessel from the shipyard would be coming to help us. We were pushing forward, just not very quickly, until finally, help arrived. The fishing vessel dropped us pretty close to the travel lift, but a power boat was currently in the sling. Now it was our turn to go to the travel lift, but those last couple of meters were going to be the most complicated yet. We had to somehow push against the current and the wind to manually get past the stacks of dozens of fishing boats. Their anchors tangled in our rigging, of course, and threatened to take down our mast. They saw us struggling, and eventually some fishermen and boatyard workers came out to catch the lines. We ping-ponged and pinballed between the vessels until finally we arrived in the correct spot. One last hiccup, the travel lift ran over a small piece of wood and swayed a little more than I would have liked, but now at last our boat was at home on the hard. As the yard workers placed the stands, we immediately started inspecting the hull. We really needed to determine how deep these blisters spread. We needed to find out which through hulls would need replacing, and we generally needed to check out all possible water intrusion into the hull, especially because our core is balsa. I think the boat was built in two halves, and then they, they, they joined the half. That's why one side is worse than the other. We wanted to begin with the propeller shaft situation ASAP, the thing that is not allowing us to use our engine. We cleaned up ropes and sails on the deck, washed everything down with fresh water, and got to work opening the blisters. The boat seems to be made of different layers, and there's this gray layer that has like zero osmosis on it, and they put like some kind of fibrous gel coat, and the water has just seemed to have gotten in that. This yeah, side. nothing has gotten to the actual hull. Yeah. That this is all like gel coat level, and the gel coat's a weird fiberglass, like fiber, fibrous. There's about a million on the port side of the boat, and there's probably two million on the 
the starboard side. So the blisters were not very deep. However, they were literally everywhere on the hull and represented a lot of salt water that had seeped in between the layers of fibrous gel coat and fiberglass. We're getting rid of this old grounding plate, which is pretty f Depends if I fiberglass it or not. We'll see, we don't have much stuff to ground. I, mean, I don't know what's with all this grounding. By removing the grounding plate, we finally and definitely determined that the hull under the waterline was in fact a balsa cord. So good riddance to all those extraneous through hulls and any holes under the waterline. We also threw out all the extra wood scraps that we had been carrying around in our bilge for several years on the floor and began to organize it. So removing the nuts off of this thing is usually difficult, but like I found out, it's decided to be easy peasy. Yeah, one finger. Whatever bronze they used on this boat was actually pretty good, I have to admit. Look at that, after 40 years, you know, that comes out easy. She's gone. Yeah. In order for the propeller shaft to come out, we would need to drop the rudder. The rudder was not going to come easy though. The stainless steel collar for the hydraulic steering and the autopilot was wrapped around the shaft extremely tight. it works but then that mushrooms the top god I think people design boats is have a place in hell so I want to design something and I want to make it as uncomfortable as possible for you to service it or work on it. I think they thought this space was pretty big when they made this space. An entire afternoon later. Oh, it still doesn't go down. But just because the collar's grip had been released did not mean that the rudder was off. No, we have to put it straight. Now lift it up and then pay. Most importantly, we wanted to get the engine shaft out. But then the moment of truth. We can almost get it out, there's probably an inch. The boat had not been lifted high enough above the ground for the rudder to drop down completely. No manches, says Robbie. We would have to find a solution for this later. Oh, hi, little snoot. Hi, little snoot. You're sitting right where I need to open. Now that the shaft was removed, we could extract the remains of the cutlass bearing. A new cutlass bearing would stop a lot of vibration in the shaft. Life in the boatyard again is a difficult but necessary part of low-cost sailboat life.
we found ourselves surrounded by grime, corrosion, decay, but also possibly renewal and repair. Choco was getting the hang of getting up and down the ladder. Only with a little help. Such a good boy. Hey, Choco, no. No. Up in his boat fortress, he loved to bark down on the boatyard dogs below. This stray dog family is very sweet, and I hope that eventually Choco can come to make friends with other dogs that he meets. But usually his meetings with other dogs are very tense, especially other males. Here he seemed to come to an understanding with the stray male, but it seemed very tentative. There was no tail wagging. Trying my best to keep clean in this filthy environment. However, we found several Chaga bugs in the bilge, so now we would have to get tested for Chaga's disease. Among the awful, dreadful horridness of each day, there is usually a beautiful, colorful sunset here. Time to sand. Several months ago, our patrons sent us several sanders and the gear to sand. The fastest one is, hands down, the rotary sander, which does not orbit randomly like the other two sanders that we have. Our random orbital sanders require new parts, and the rotary sander decided to die right about here. We've accumulated three sanders over the years, and currently three of them are broken. The foremost bearing decided to stop spinning. If you can find a way to change the bearing, to pull the bearing out, we can kind of maybe epoxy, do like a... a yeah, do an epoxy. What was the issue with the other sander? We have another Dewalt, no? We have another Dewalt and that one's pad is dead. I could order the part online, but it would take several weeks to get through customs from the US. It's pretty seized. So I kept on sanding with the little Milwaukee. However, the bearing was starting to go on that one as well. It's slow going to say the least without the rotary sander. Moving on to through holes. Luckily, the nasty water inside these tubes had been drained and dried out days ago. I tapped it ever so lightly and it just came off. This handle is ready to die. Through holes and their seacocks, or valves, are really pricey, of course, so we were hoping to salvage as many as possible. However, they are also extremely important to be in fully functioning condition for the safety of the ship. Things were not looking good for these valves. However, it looked like we could keep some of the through hulls in place. We got one that's by the water tank. We have three holes less in our hull to deal with. We're going to remove this second one, and we're going to remove this third one. And we're going to remove the fourth one that's underneath next to the engine. After some close inspection, pinkness in the bronze indicated that we would need to replace this one. 
This other through hole, for example, looked all right for reuse. Robbie tackled the truly challenging crusty seacocks. He used every trick in and outside of the book to remove these weakened fittings. Like the actual structural piece seems to be pretty solid. There is some, or what we're fearing, of like form of electrolysis on the on the feet. So the feet on are the great. on the grate. The grate is. Fucked. He went to town on this one to test just how much abuse a compromised through hole in our boat could take. Yeah, this is pretty fucking strong. I mean, even the parts are very slightly pinkish. Uh. Managed to get in there in the gap, tack the tack, tack the tack, so separate it a little bit. Then I managed to actually get this thing on it. I get a few twists to loosen the thing, and I just put the hammer and I went tack, tack. One through hole was particularly eaten away over time, and Robbie simply took the grinder and flapper disc to it. On the inside, within the dark, damp hole in which I was extracting it, it basically crumbled away in my hand. The last hole through the hull was a plastic one. I truly made an attempt to salvage what I could, but this one was not going to come out in one piece either. While waiting for the sander parts to arrive in the mail, our grinder was still working perfectly. So it was an appropriate time to bevel each and every hole in the hull that would need to be sealed up. I needed to bevel on the inside of the boat as well. It's actually one of the most difficult tasks to clear out entire rooms in the boat to prepare for grinding indoors. Not to mention cleaning and washing all the walls and ceilings afterwards. Well, finally, the new spindle for the rotary sander arrived, so it was time to fill in the space that had been melted away by the non-rotating bearing. Just a tiny nickel size of two-part engine weld on both sides of the sander casing. And the old spindle assembly wrapped in a thin plastic bag. I squished it all closed overnight. The next day, I opened it all up and the smoothly repaired area was ready for the new bearing. It was very satisfying to get back to revealing all the problems under the remaining paint. The keel was covered in a thick but completely delaminating grey layer. The pieces were just chunking off with water in between. In the last stages of sanding the hull, in the last moments of sunlight of the day, the rotary sander bearing seized again. 
God dang it. Mm-hmm.